Hello everyone, welcome to Ratscope. Well, in this video, we are going to see how to measure CBD and what do we actually call CBD. And the motivation or inspiration to make this video for me came from my own experience of seeing several times CBD measured incorrectly on cross-sectional imaging. And uh, by cross-sectional imaging, I mean CT scans and also even on MRCPs. Well, in this video, in this particular case, I am going to talk about an important variant, which is the variant insertion of cystic duct on common hepatic duct. Now, how these two things are related? Well, do you in your normal practice try to see where cystic duct exactly inserts on common hepatic duct? Well, I always do. The reason is CBD starts below the insertion of cystic duct on common hepatic duct. Now, this is extremely important because if we don't see where exactly the cystic duct is inserting onto common hepatic duct, we can't possibly with confidence say what we measured is actually CBD. So you can imagine that if you're not looking at that site of insertion, you can mistakenly measure common hepatic duct as CBD. And that's how the uh, insertion site of cystic duct and any variant anatomy of cystic duct becomes relevant so i'm sharing this case with you it's an interesting case it's an it's about an important variant and quite rare one actually so we will see how to look at the cystic duct anatomy how to identify its insertion on common bile duct uh, its insertion on common hepatic duct and also we would learn about its importance uh, okay so this is a case, you can see that this is a coronal image, MRCPT to fat set image. So um, where do you think you would measure CBD? Is that where you would measure CBD? Well, that's not the correct location, it is wrong. Maybe here, it is still wrong. Well, how about here? Well, it is still wrong. All of these locations are wrong, why? because we haven't yet determined where is cystic duct and where is it inserting onto common hepatic duct. So we all know that the right and left hepatic ducts join to form common hepatic duct and, duct and that's the confluence of right and left hepatic duct and that's where the common hepatic duct starts. Now cystic duct drains bile from gallbladder and takes it to common hepatic duct where the two join and then they drain into common bile duct which then goes on to open into the second part of the duodenum at major papilla. So we need to look for the cystic duct insertion. This is the gallbladder. It has got a big chunky stone in it. We will ignore it for the time being. This is the area of gallbladder neck and you can see that a duct is developing in this location. There is another stone here and we would ignore this too for the time being. And that's where the cystic duct is coming off, isn't it? So that's the cystic duct, it's going down and here it assumes quite parallel course with common hepatic duct and that's where it is inserting into the common hepatic duct. So all this thing was common hepatic duct. Why? Because this is all above the cystic duct insertion. That's where the cystic duct is inserting onto common hepatic duct and below that just this tiny part is CBD. Well, that's not a normal case, isn't it? The cystic duct wouldn't insert that low on common hepatic duct. Normally, it is somewhere midway between the porta hepatis and ampulla. So normally cystic duct would insert somewhere in the center here with common hepatic duct and the part distal to that would be um, CBD. So first of all, it's important to understand what is the normal anatomy. So like I said, under normal circumstances, the cystic duct would connect with common hepatic duct um, somewhere midway between the porta hepatis and ampulla, which is in the second part of the duodenum. And it would be good time to see a normal example as well. Let me pause it and pull up a normal case. Okay, so here we go. What do you see here? Well, again, ignore this 0.8 centimeter stone in distal CBD. Uh, just look at the cystic duct. So this is the neck of the gallbladder and you can see cystic duct coming off here. And over here, it's inserting into the common hepatic duct. So 
the part of the duct below that, that's all CBD. So this has been correctly measured here. It's 0 0.9 centimeter and the prominence is related to this stone. But that's what I was trying to say that above the cystic duct insertion, this part is common hepatic duct and below that is CBD. And that's what you normally see. In these patients, you wouldn't measure CBD here. You would just measure anywhere below the cystic duct insertion, but we tend to measure the uh, obviously the part below which is widest in diameter this is a um, more common kind of appearance um, it doesn't have any variation now let's go back to our previous case so here like i said before cystic duct goes all the way down there and then inserts into common hepatic duct fairly low it's very close to ampulla isn't it and if you have uh, difficulty understanding the anatomy we can look at the axial image as well so so this is the gallbladder with a chunky stone in it and this is the this is where the cystic duct starts um, developing from the neck of uh, gallbladder this is the common hepatic duct how do i know i can just go up and look at the confluence and these are actually quite thick slices but this is the common hepatic duct this is the cystic duct they are going side by side now what's happening here so in normal circumstances like i said when cystic duct is inserting midway between ampulla and porta hepatis it would insert along the lateral aspect of the common hepatic duct and even in majority of the very cystic duct insertions where cystic duct has fairly low insertion into the common hepatic duct even then we mostly see the insertion to be lateral but this case is even rarer where cystic duct is not just inserting into the lower aspect of common hepatic duct it also happens to have medial insertion so this is the cystic duct coming off the neck of gallbladder and you can see that now it is actually going posterior to common hepatic duct so this tiny thing this is not pancreatic duct this is the cystic duct and this thing is common hepatic duct it's not cbd it's common hepatic duct so keep coming down and then somewhere here it finally inserted into the common hepatic duct and that part below is the CBD. Now this part is a bit difficult to see. Uh, like I said before, these are quite uh, thick section images. And let's see if we can find anything useful on these T2 images without fat set. Again, this is the common hepatic duct. This is the cystic duct. And we're not actually able to see the terminal most part. I think cor coronal images are still going to be the best. And we can look at try to look at this as well. Again, you can see um, this is the cystic duct going on the medial side this is the common hepatic duct and crossing it posteriorly to go into its medial side and that's where it's inserting into the common hepatic duct and below that just this tiny part just before it opens into the ampulla that's where the common bile duct is so that that is actually the importance of knowing where exactly the cystic duct is because before without knowing that we won't be able to accurately measure cbd diameter now why else is it important so one thing is for our own measurement we need to identify cbd but it has much more importance than that it is extremely important for the endoscopists and surgeons to know where the cystic duct is and where the common bile duct and chd are and why do you think is that well first of all it is crucial to identify it for surgical planning to avoid misidentification that can lead to injury to the bile duct. They, they wouldn't normally expect cystic duct going posterior to common bile duct or CHD, would they? So they can in inadvertently um, injure either of these two structures. Well, also during ERCP, this um, variant anatomy can lead to complications. So you can imagine that the scopes or stents can be wrongly, incorrectly placed into within the cystic duct, which can then lead to complications. And this can then lead to obviously injuries and bile leaks after the procedure. Now, this was obviously um, more kind of iatrogenic complications um, by not correctly identifying the anatomy of the biliary tree before surgery or endoscopy. What other complications this variant anatomy can have? The variant cystic duct anatomy, particularly the low insertion, is related to increased incidence of cholangitis and CBD stones. Now, how common do you think this variant cystic duct anatomy is? Well, this low medial insertion of uh, cystic duct has relatively lower incidence than other kinds of variants. It's about 4 to 5 percent. And generally, the low cystic duct insertion can have uh, incidence of about 10 percent in literature. 
Let me show you one final example of uh, variant cystic duct anatomy. So in this example, again, cystic duct has low insertion onto common hepatic duct, but this time it's lateral, which is more common than the medial insertion. So this is the cystic duct. This is the common hepatic duct. We wouldn't measure CBD over here or here. CBD is actually at this level after the cystic duct insertion. There looks like a stone here in the lower end of CBD and uh, CBD is probably mildly distended, but all of this distended part is hepatic duct, common hepatic duct, not CBD. We can look at it in axial image as well. So yeah, you can see this is the cystic duct and this is the common hepatic duct and that's where the join below that this is the cbd which actually contains two small stones isn't it or probably even more than two hope it gave you some clarity on how to measure cbd and the importance of looking at the cystic duct insertion to allow proper pre-operative or pre-endoscopy planning Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learning.